Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Brian, and I'm here to talk about this instrument here. This is the harp, and I'm also going to talk about music appreciation in everyday life. Uh, I'm a harpist by profession. I teach, and then I also perform at the Kunming Philharmonic, the Malaysian Philharmonic, and the Singapore Symphony. And I also do events for like weddings or product launches. Now, this is a very small harp. This is the smallest harp I have, and this is actually a very modern harp. This is an electric harp. It was designed about two years ago. So as you can see, it's all about electronics. But the normal harp that we play on in a classical music setting is very tall, taller than me, nearly seven feet, and weighs about 45 kg. It's a very, very large instrument. Some of you might be wondering, how do you play the harp? It's very simple. The harp is actually just, no matter what you see in the pictures, it's just a simple triangle. There are strings strung between the triangle with a lot of tension. You curve your hands like this, and you play. On the piano, you have white and black keys. On the harp, we have levers. For example, the red string, for those of you who know some music, C, or Do, is a red string. When I move the lever up, it becomes a C sharp. With this, I can control the pitches on my harp. What is music? Well, I think, to me, music is a language. And what is language? Language is a series of sounds. Sounds that, when you hear them, they convey specific meanings to you. Music is a language, but it's very different. You don't hear specific meanings, but it harnesses your imagination. It has very wide range of stuff. For example, Saying, some of you might have been thinking of a lot of different things. Maybe some of you were thinking about your unfinished assignments waiting for you. Some of you might have been thinking about your significant other waiting for you later, and maybe you are just very hungry and you want to go for dinner as soon as possible and you're looking at your watches. Okay, why do I choose the harp? Because music is sound, and sound is a vibration through the air that you can hear. I like the harp very much because the vibration of the harp is going through the whole instrument and I play so close to the instrument that I can feel the vibration through my own body. And then harp is a very individual instrument. With your finger directly, you control the sound that you produce. Everybody's finger is different and everybody, even if you come up here and try to play my harp, you will have a slightly different sound from me. It's a very individual instrument and it's very direct because I control everything. Not like, for example, a piano. 
where you press a button and some things happen inside the piano and a sound comes out. Um, I was always told that I was very shocking to people when I started to play harp because every time people talk about harp, they always imagine an angel with wings in a white dress and gold hair. And I'm very sorry to disappoint you all today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but actually, like I was saying, the harp is a very, very big instrument normally. I, I'm sorry, I had to bring the small one, but it's taller than me, 45 kg. It's a very heavy and a very physical instrument. So actually, it's not a feminine instrument at all. <laughs> okay, why is music important in life? Because of emotions and imagination. We are people, we are humans, we are not robots. When we go to do something, for example, when you are assigned an assignment, you are not all going to turn in the same assignment because you are thinking humans. You have creativity, you have imagination, you have individuality. And music is all about that, creativity and imagination. Sound, you perceive sound differently. A lot of people think that maybe that, you, know, you have no talent in music or some people say they are tone deaf, they cannot really distinguish between sounds. That's not true. Has anybody tried like your mom has called you on the phone and you didn't look at your phone and you thought that it was your dad? It's impossible because you can differentiate the sound of your mom and your dad. Now then, I'm going to play some soundtracks and I want to test your perception of sound. I want to see whether you can tell what I am playing. Anybody know? Yes, exactly. And now, from the same composer, another famous soundtrack. knows what this was? Yes. Great. See? Perception of sound. For the next piece, which is also from the same composer, I would like to invite my very good friend, Mr. Bu Cheng Xuan, who is a native here from Batu Pahat, to help me with the demonstration.
Does anybody know what movie is this from? Oh, great. Okay, for those of you who might not know, Schindler's List is a movie about World War II. And um, during World War II, the Nazis were persecuting Jews. There was this German businessman, Oskar Schindler. He rescued many Polish Jews at the risk of his own life and at the risk of his own fortune. And this movie is all about that, about the sadness of the cruelty and horror of World War II. It sounds very sad to you, right? Yes. So that's how music relates to us in, in everyday life. Now, yet music is not a very appreciated thing in Malaysia. Why is that? I think it's because of education. In primary school, secondary school, I think some of you might have experienced it. If you were not very good at your core subjects like math in English, Bahasa, what do they tell you to do? They tell you to take music. They tell you to take art because they tell you it is very easy to pass these subjects. <laughs> Contrast this, please, with countries like Taiwan, China, Singapore. They have dedicated schools of the art, where primary schools, secondary schools. People go there, they learn their core subjects, but the primary target is art, is music. And how has that helped them? Look at China. China has almost no history, no background in Western classical music, yet their musicians today are all over the world competing with Westerners who have been playing classical music for the last few hundred years. Look at Taiwan. The standard of music is so high, you need a license to perform on the streets. <laughs> yes. And um, I have experienced myself as a teacher so many times. My students cancel lessons because they said, I have a maths exam tomorrow, I need to study. I'm still waiting for the day where somebody will cancel their maths lesson because they have a hard exam. <laughs> yes. Hypothetically, let's say you are going out with your girlfriend's family, okay? And they ask you, what is your profession? If you tell them you're a lawyer, engineer, pilot, accountant, they'll be like, hmm, good, good, very good. If you tell them, musician, artist, gamer, they will be like, oh, oh. And then I guarantee you, I guarantee you, after the dinner, they will go back and they will ask their daughter, you sure he can feed you? <laughs> dollars and cents. We calculate everything based on dollars and cents. But how do you put a value on creative minds like Leonardo da Vinci, Robert Buffett, Paul Allen, very successful people in their fields. But they all played music. They all harnessed the power of creativity and imagination. I have a student who is one of the top bankers in Malaysia. He used to play violin when he was young, and now he plays the harp. He learns it not only because he says it helps him with the creativity and imagination, but because he says it helps him to relax. It helps him to get out of the world of dollars and cents. Many people, many, many people have always dreamed of being a musician and sadly they were not able to because maybe their parents did not let them. I am very, very happy that my parents have allowed me to pursue this dream. Thank you very, very much. And then I have many students who come to me now when they are adults and they start to learn hard with me because they said, finally, now I have my financial freedom and I have time and now I can pursue what I could not pursue when I was a child. Maybe they will never be a professional musician, but it's something that they want to do. And sometimes I also have clients who got married, they have kids, they don't even have time to learn. So what do they do? They hire me to play this at their wedding.
Ladies and gentlemen, I challenge you today to walk away with a new appreciation of the art and the music in your life. Something as simple as the chair that you're sitting on today, the shirt that you're wearing today, the handphone ringtone that you set every day, the alarm song, hopefully it's a song, that you want to listen to every day when you wake up, the movie soundtracks. You see, there was no movie. There was no movie on the slides, but you recognize the movie based on the music that I played. This is the power of music. Harness the power of creativity and imagination. There's no knowing how far it can take you. Thank you.